Hello and welcome to the seventh week of season 22, Season of the Witch, starting on October 3rd, 2023. So for week seven, let's get going with our legacy rotation, starting with the Forsaken expansion. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. The Dreaming City this week is at a weak curse level, which means Petrovenge can be found in the Strand and has the Broken Courier mission for the next week. The Blind World features Scorn enemies and the Plagues, Sycorus and Vericus. The Ascendant Challenge this week will be the Forfeit Shrine, which can be located over in the Gardens of Asilia on the Dreaming City. Next up, the Shadowkeep expansion. On the Moon, the weekly story mission is Beyond, the Trove Guardian is located in Archer's Line, while the Wandering Nightmare is the Nightmare of Holkis in the Anchor of Light. And the Nightmare Hunts this week will be Fogoth, Fear, Ghoul, Rage, and Tanix Isolation. For our Beyond Light expansion, on Europa this week, Kredis the Dark Priestess will be the Empire Hunt, Eventide Ruins will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Challenge will be Survival. For the 30th Anniversary expansion, Dares of Eternity Legendary Rounds are Vex, Cabal, and for the final round, Crota. The Loot Rotation will be on Week 4's Rotation, with the Scatterhorn Armor Set and the Pathfinder Armor Set being available. The weapons available this week will be the Stasis Position Frame Shotgun Fractithis, the Solar High Impact Frame Auto Rifle Cryosura Milo, the Stasis Position Frame Hand Cannon Volpicula, the Arc Position Frame Bow Wolf Tone Draw, the Solar High Impact Frame Fusion Rifle Iotona Draconis, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher Canis Major, the Arc Vice Rapid Fire Frame Scout Rifle Contingency Plan, the Kinetic High Impact Frame Pulse Rifle Legal Action 2, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher Outrageous Fortune, the Void Adaptive Frame Sword Steel Syllabus C14, and the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Sidearm Spoiler Alert. For the Witch Queen expansion, the Witch Queen weekly story mission is The Arrival, where the modifiers are Scorched Earth and Fire Pit, as well as Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Also this week you'll have Altar of Reflections Catalyst and Altar of Reflections Insight. The Wellspring activity has been updated to include a featured Throne World weapon, Veritas Armor and a weapon pattern as its rewards. For the Lightful expansion, the weekly mission is Downfall, with Extra Shields, Lock Loadouts and Extra Champions, Barrier and Unstoppable Champions, Solar Threat, Scorched Earth, Kinetic Overcharge, Void and Solar Surges, with an Overcharge Weapon, and Galvanized on Hero Difficulty only. The Partition mission will be Backdoor, Contest Mode enabled with Barrier and Overload Champions, Void Threat, Arc and Solar Shields, Shocker Modifier, with Void and Strand Surges. And the Vex Incursion this week will be Zephyr Concourse. In addition, the weekly Lightful Reset also refreshes the pinnacle drop for the Node Override Avalon Exotic mission on the EDZ. For the Season of the Deep, all three fishing ponds are now exotic all week. Raids and Dungeons The Crota's End Raid Challenge this week is the third encounter, Iyut the Deathsinger, called Equal Vessel. All six players must rotate the Chalice of Light buff in the same order throughout the entire fight. Each player cannot hold the Chalice again before all five other players have. Plus, if you complete the weekly challenge on Master, you'll get an Adept Weapon. The Adept Weapon you get is a random drop, but works on a knockout system. You will get a new one with every challenge you complete every week until you've unlocked them all. The King's Fall Raid Challenge this week is the fifth encounter, Oryx, called Hands Off. Players must not kill the same Ogre or Light Eater Knight throughout the encounter. The Vow the Disciple Challenge this week is the first encounter, Acquisition, called Swift Destruction, where Guardians must kill all champions within a few seconds of each other on all rounds. The Vault of Glass challenge this week is the first encounter, Confluxes, called Wait For It, where every yellow bar wyvern must be killed as they sacrifice themselves to the Confluxes. The Deep Stone Crypt challenge this week is the third encounter, Tanix Part 1, called Of All Trades. Guardians must perform each role at least once, Operator, Scanner and Suppressor. The Garden of Salvation challenge this week is the third encounter, Consecrated Mind, called Staying Alive, where you must not kill the spawning Cycloxes in the first two rooms. And the last wish challenge this week is the fifth encounter, Riven, called Strength of Memory, where Guardians must not shoot the same Riven Eye twice. And for the first time, the Pinnacle Raid will be the Root of Nightmares over on Neptune, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Cataclysm, called Illuminated Torment. This is where every Tormentor must be killed by a player with a Field of Light buff. The second encounter, Scission, called Crossfire. No one can shoot the launch crystals on the side they're currently standing on. The third encounter, Macrocosm, called Cosmic Equilibrium. Players must swap all of the dark planets to the left side of the room and all of the light worlds to the right. And the fourth encounter, Nazarek, called All Hands. Each player in your fire team must trigger one node on each side before the damage phase begins. 
Also, with the Root of Nightmares being the featured raid, this does mean that you can farm the final boss for a chance at the exotic shotgun, Conditional Finality. The pinnacle dungeon for this week will be the Duality over on the Derelict Leviathan on the Moon. And the exotic mission rotator will be Presage, with the Dead Man's Tail exotic scout rifle being the main reward. Craftable weapons available from this mission include the Arc Adaptive Glaive, Nezarex Whisper, the Stasis Aggressive Frame Rocket Launcher, Bump in the Night, the Kinetic Precision Frame Scout Rifle, Tears of Contrition, the Void Adaptive Frame Trace Rifle, Hollow Denial, the Kinetic Precision Frame Auto Rifle, Fire Fright, the Solar Lightweight Frame Shotgun Without Remorse, the Kinetic Adaptive Frame Hand Cannon or Stringer, the Solar Sidearm Drang Baroque, the Solar Adaptive Frame Sniper, Beloved, and the Solar Submachine Gun Callus Mini Tool, with the Idolum Pursuant Armor Set. Next up, Challenges. Acolytes Ascent 7. Complete Week 7 of the Bladed Path Quest for Challenge XP. Power Caster. Defeat 100 combatants with power weapons in Season of the Witch activities for Challenge XP+. Plus. Ritual Rampage. Rapidly defeat 50 combatants and defeat 25 challenging combatants in the Altar of Summoning for Challenge XP. Boom Slayer. Defeat 200 targets with rocket launchers or machine guns. And bonus progress by defeating guardians or by defeating combatants in Season of the Witch activities for Challenge XP+. Plus. Lost in Legend. Complete a Lost Sector on Legend or higher for Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Guardian Spirit. Assist your allies via revives, healing, overshields and subclass buffs in Vanguard, Gambit or Crucible playlists for Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Gotta win them all. Complete activities in Vanguard, Gambit or Crucible playlists. Bonus progress is granted for completing Vanguard playlist activities at hero difficulty or higher or for winning Gambit or Crucible matches for Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. Enlightened Gambit. Defeat 200 targets with the Arc, Solar or Void subclass equipped in Gambit. Bonus progress is awarded for Ability Final Blows and Guardian Final Blows. For Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. And Rapid Precision. Get 150 Rapid Precision Final Blows. Bonus progress is granted for every defeated target after the second one. For Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. Hello! Hello. As a reminder, your daily loss sector will show you a flag outside which will give you details of threats, shields, champions and exotic armor you will find inside. But if you're new to the game or using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the loss sector normally to have it show up on your map as a legend slash master. Which you can either do solo or with a fire team. But you'll only be able to earn a chance at the exotic drop when completing solo. Tuesday, October 3rd will be Val's Labyrinth on the Cosmodrome for exotic boots, Arc Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Arc and Solar Shields, Fire Pit Modifier, Overcharged Shotguns with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Wednesday, October 4th will be Exodus Garden 2A on the Cosmic Drone for Exotic Gauntlets, Void Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void Shields, Scorched Earth Modifier, Overcharged Linear Fusion Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Thursday, October 5th will be Sepulchre on the Throne Rod for Exotic Chess, Solar Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Solar and Arc Shields, Fire Pit Modifier, Overcharged Fusion Rifles, with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Friday, October 6th will be Extraction on the Throne Rod for Exotic Helmets, Arc Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Arc and Void Shields, Raider Shield Modifier, Overcharged Glaives, with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Saturday, October 7th will be Metamorphosis on the Throne Rod for Exotic Boots, Arc Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Arc and Solar Shields, Scorched Earth Modifier, Overcharged Machine Guns with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Sunday, October 8th will be the K1 Revelations on the Moon for Exotic Gauntlets, Void Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Arc Shields, Fire Pit Modifier, Overcharged Machine Guns with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. And finally, back round to Monday, October 9th will be the K1 Communion on the Moon for Exotic Chess, Solar Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Solar and Void Shields, Arachno Modifier, Overcharged Linear Fusion Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Lead the way. Our seventh featured Nightfall of the Season will see us face off against Alakul in the Lightblade over on the Throne World, where you have a chance to get a Pinnacle Engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 200k or more. This Nightfall will require you to own the Witch Queen expansion. You'll be able to earn high-end gear for your characters including the Nightfall featured weapon, exotic gear, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, ascendant shards and adept Nightfall ciphers. The higher the Nightfall difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and exotic gear being uncommon at hero difficulty to being common with Ascendant Shards in Grand Masters. Legend and Low Nightfalls will have 8 Barrier, 2 Unstoppable and 7 Lucent Champions. 
with 6 solar and 12 arc shields. Masters will have 12 barrier, 3 unstoppable and 7 lucent champions, with 6 solar and 8 arc shields. Your Nightfall modifiers are Hero Difficulty Maximum Effective Level 1765, Matchmaking is available, Enemies have extra shields, Champions Foe, you will face Barrier, Unstoppable and Lucent Champions. You can either use Intrinsic Exotics, use a subclass debuff or unlock anti-champion mods from the Seasonal Artifact. Arc Threat, 25% increase to incoming arc damage. Empath, Enhanced Radar, take increased damage from melee. Overcharge Weapons, Weapons overcharged from the Seasonal Artifact are active in this activity. Kinetic Weapons do increased damage when your subclass element matches an active Surge. Arc Surge, 25% bonus to outgoing arc damage. Void Surge, 25% bonus to outgoing void damage. Overcharge Grenade Launcher, 25% bonus damage with grenade launchers. Galvanized, combatants have more health and are more difficult to stun. Legend Difficulty, maximum effective level 1815, includes all previous modifiers except Galvanized. No matchmaking. Equipment locked, you will be unable to change your equipment once the mission starts. Master Difficulty, maximum effective level 1820, includes all previous modifiers except Galvanized. Champions Mob, this difficulty adds more champion enemies. Chafe, the radar is disabled. Grand Master Difficulty, maximum effective level 1815, includes all previous modifiers except Galvanized. Join in progress disabled. Extinguish, if your fire team falls in a restricted zone, your team is returned to orbit. Limited revives, gain additional revives by defeating champions up to a maximum of 20. And contest mode, which caps your power level to make enemies more of a challenge. To combat champions this season, you have access to subclass counters as well as a choice of intrinsic anti-champion artifact mods, which are anti-barrier auto rifle, anti-barrier bow, unstoppable scout rifle, and unstoppable fusion. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. For anti-barrier, the kinetic bow wish ender, the kinetic linear fusion rifle arbalist, the kinetic pulse rifle revision zero, the solar energy hand cannon Ariana's vow, the solar heavy sword the lament and the Titan Gauntlet's Second Chance, which gain a second charge of a shield throw melee, which becomes shield piercing and stuns barrier champions. And for Unstoppable, the Kinetic Fusion Rifle Bastion, the Kinetic Hand Cannon Malfeasance, the Kinetic Scout Rifle Touch of Malice, the Solar Energy Sidearm Devil's Ruin, the Void Heavy Bow Leviathan's Breath, and the Hunter Gauntlet's Atheris' Embrace, which have a chance to stun Unstoppable champions with their empowered weighted knife. The Nightfall featured weapon to obtain this week will be the Arc High Impact Frame Fusion Rifle Loaded Question. The Loaded Question has a base impact of 90, a range of 52 and stability of 25. It can roll with Controlled Burst, Reservoir Burst and Harmony, with Envious Assassin, Under Pressure and Auto Loading Holster. It has the origin trait of Stunning Recovery, where if you stun a champion you partially refill the magazine, trigger Health Regen and improve your recovery for a short duration. And Vanguard Vindication, where final blows with the weapon grant a small amount of health. Lord Shaxx brings Momentum Control to the Crucible for the 7th week of the season. Momentum Control is a 6v6 PvP mode which is a variation on the regular control mode, where every weapon is significantly higher in lethality, meaning that you can take out your opponents much faster than normal. Respawns are instant, and defeating enemy players in Momentum Control will grant faster regeneration on your melee, grenade and super. Players get increased damage resistance when they activate a super, to help counteract that little bit of extra damage that the guns give out. The mode also has increased capture speed on points and the radar is removed for every player. Achieve victory by capturing zones and defeating opponents. And Clash will also be available in the Relentless Crucible playlist. Clash is a 6v6 PvP mode where level advantages are disabled, and points are gained through scoring kills against the opposing team. Players are not penalised for low map control, and can bunker down together or fan out as they see fit. Strength in numbers is paramount as a lone player can be picked off very quickly by team shooting enemies. Heavy ammo can swing the balance of a match, so controlling the box can be the key to winning. Super usage, both offensively and defensively, is one way to break the deadlock. Plus, available in the Crucible Labs playlist this week will be the new game mode Checkmate Survival. Checkmate Survival is a modified version of survival. Just like in the regular mode, each team starts with a pool of shared respawns. The respawn pool cannot be refilled, and when a player dies they will consume one life from that pool. Players have a 7 second respawn timer and when the team's respawn pool is depleted, players who cannot respawn remain in spectator mode until the round or match ends. Each round also features a 2 minute timer after which the round ends or enters overtime. Winning a round can be done by defeating opponents until they have depleted their respawn pools and eliminating the ones still standing, or by having more lives left when the time runs out. If the timer runs out whilst the teams are tied, the round enters overtime. 
One more minute is added to the timer and a capture point from the control mode is introduced to the map and both teams lose their unused respawns. The team that captures the point wins the round. If overtime also ends in a tie, the round ends and no teams receive the points. The first team to win four rounds is declared the winner of the match. Don't forget that the checkmate parameters are in play, with primary weapon damage being tuned to feel a little differently from the rest of the game. Players also have increased health and passive regeneration of the grenade, melee and class abilities have all been reduced by 50%, and supers by 40. Also you will not spawn in with special ammo. Instead you will have to earn it by generating points from kills, assists, deaths, zone captures and gathering heavy ammo. You won't lose points accumulated on death and special ammo you earn persists through lives and rounds. Additionally, you will not drop special ammo on death. Delightful! And Saint 14 will be back at the weekend with Trials of Osiris Dominion, bringing with him a whole host of rewards for players who do make it to the lighthouse and open the chest. These include the Hero's Wake Exotic Ghost Shell, the Valiant Memory Exotic Ship, the Survivor's Journey Exotic Sparrow, a new armor set, and the new Trial Shader, Bloodline Feud. Trials of Osiris Dominion is a 3v3 PvP high stakes game mode with a twist of a capture point. In Dominion, two teams of three go head to head in a battle for control of a capture point. Teams can either work together to capture the control point or eliminate the enemy team to win the round. Only available from Friday Reset until Tuesday Weekly Reset, Trials gives every player the chance to show off their PvP skills to obtain some of Destiny's most sought after weapons and armour. Players that compete in Trials of Osiris will have all of their games tracked through a passage card. A ticket purchased from Saint 14 in the lower hangar of the tower. Winning rounds and matches in Trials of Osiris will grant exclusive weapons, armor, pinnacle gear, masterwork materials, and even adept gear for the most skilled players who can reach the lighthouse with a flawless ticket of seven games won and no losses. Five round wins will bag you the match for your passage card. By competing in Trials, you do have a chance to pick up two pinnacle engrams from playing each week, one from 50 round wins and the other from winning seven games. These do not have to be done all in one go, but you do have to complete them before the weekly reset. That is amazing. This week we'll also see the return of the Grandmaster Nightfall selection node, which means you will be able to select any Grandmaster Nightfall from this season to complete or guild your Conqueror seal. And that's it for week 7 of Season of the Witch. I art, Guardians. Guardian down.